Nicodune is an Apple TV series that was released in 2021 and has two seasons, each with six episodes, which are each about 20 to 30 minutes long. The episodes are full of bombast, comedy, and fun. It was created by Cinco Paul and Ken Dario, directed by Barry Somerfield, Alice Mathia, and Robert Lukedic. And it's an, an anthology show about two doctors in love named Mel and Josh who travel from the real world to one of whimsy and musicals. I love show tunes, so the show has been right up my alley. I do admit I'm not a music theorist, and although I'm currently learning how to play viola and craft music, I don't know much about criticism or specific mechanics. I want to learn more. Currently, I can just tell you if I think a song slaps, and I really enjoy the music in Schmigadoon. In season one, Schmigadoon's town entrance song, Cross That Bridge, Lover Spat, With All of Your Heart, Suddenly, I Always Never Get My Man, and Tribulation are some of my favorites. The one long take in Tribulation is especially wonderful. In season two, I enjoyed Kaput and its reprise, Bells and Whistles, Talk to Daddy, and A Happy Beginning. Throughout season one, Josh refuses to sing until his song in the finale, and his voice is raspy as if he's on the verge of tears. Keegan-Michael Key can really sing, but it sounded like they were holding him back. I think they were going for the emotions or playing off how Josh can't sing, but I think it would have been more powerful at for it to be more like a love ballad. Plus, Melissa mentions how Schmigadoon magically works to fit the person's vocal range. Thankfully, Josh gets some fun songs in season two. The costuming props and dance numbers are gorgeous. I especially love how the camera angles and dance moves change, showing the historic evolution of musicals. The show is pretty ham-fisted with its themes, but as a musical, it can kind of get away with it. Season one is about love. Mel has an idealized version of love and seems to think that if she can't have a perfect relationship, she should be alone instead. Although Josh can be initially charming, he doesn't put in the legwork, as shown with all of your heart. Both can be overly harsh. Mildred has a certain restrictive view of what a good relationship can be and enforces this view on everyone, even when she can't follow it herself. Aloysius and Reverend Layton show some of the victims of her rhetoric and the benefits of getting to be yourself in a relationship. As Mel and Josh are able to improve their relationship and get married, they return to the humdrum monotony of daily life, leading to season two, which is about happiness. It shows how restrictive leaders can make it harder to feel happiness. Octavius Kratt rules the town with an iron fist, making it harder for Jenny, Rivera, Frau, and Dooley especially. Even having this position of power doesn't make him happy, as he's desperate for love. The narrator is in a similar position. Even Topher, who is a benevolent ruler, isn't happy in the beginning, and then he coddles his followers. Melissa and Josh both even focus on fame and a toxic ideal of happiness, ignoring the opinions of people they care about. While in the end, they realize true happiness doesn't exist, but every day can be a happy beginning. I love the ending of the happiness arc in season two. The visuals and song are awesome, but the beginning feels extremely rushed and simplistic. Both seasons are quickly paced, starting out somewhat slow and then ramping up. I think it works out really well for season one, as it has a relatively simple plot. Members of a couple try dating other people, but realize they prefer being with each other. I enjoyed season two, but I feel like season one had a sharper plot. I liked how Mel and Josh don't backslide in their relationship. Even when they disagree, they work in tandem. We get to keep their character development from season one, which is awesome. Additionally, in season one, we got slower flashbacks of their prior relationship, which we don't really need in season two, as we can dive straight into the musical bombast in action. Mildred's villainy felt real. Even when she's given the opportunity to change after she has her hypocritical temper tantrum, the redemption doesn't feel forced, nor does it feel like she's exonerated of her failings. She reminds me of people in my life who have more constraining views like her. Krat is a fun villain with an epic death and interesting interactions with Melissa and Jenny. I love how he chews the scenery. I wish we got to see more of him. For instance, he frames Josh, but we don't really see him fight in the courtroom. Topher mentions his negative environmental practices, but we don't see them either. Kratz cronies Frau and Rivera are given redemption arcs. Seeing Josh talk down Rivera, Frau and Rivera's song, and getting to see Rivera be his true self are awesome moments. While with Dooley and Codwell, their redemptions don't really work for me. One moment they're singing about how they want to torture children, but and then the next they're helping save the day and selling pastries. It sort of makes sense for Dooley as he wants revenge on Krat and is lashing out. Codwell hates her job and is likely doing it because she thinks Dooley would like her. Still, it feels like such a whiplash moment with not much meat given to the redemption. If they were to be redeemed, it would need a lot of development, which it does not have. 
Similarly, I wish we got to see more between Jenny and Dooley with their reconciliation. Season two really swings for the fences with a lot of elements, some definitely hitting and others bungled. But either way, I also wanted to mention that I adore Jane Krakowski's performance as the minor villain Countess Blurkey and the lawyer with no morals, Bobby Flanagan, who is my favorite character in season two. Adriana DeBose's performance as Emma Tate is awesome, and her more minor performance as MC brings great texture to the setting of season two. For the most part, I feel like the comedy is really charming throughout. Some of it references musicals, but I feel like you could still enjoy it even if you don't get the specific reference. Oftentimes, Mel and Josh serve as commentary, exposition, and straight men for the antics of the cast of musical characters, but they get involved with their own chicanery. One of my favorite running jokes is how whenever Josh needs to explain something, he turns towards cheesy movies, especially Airbud. Another one is both Mel and Josh shutting down the music, especially in the moment in season two's finale where the kidnap Mel pulls his move. Sometimes the jokes run dry. For instance, I struggled to enjoy the comedy with Betsy in season one as it felt cliche. Similarly, I understand how with Doc Lopez they're poking fun at egotistical men and how quickly relationships develop in musicals, but it felt weird for an independent feminist like Mel to quickly fall head over heels for him. Shemekka Dune is a very fun show. It kind of reminds me of Kettle Corn or a Lollipop. It's sweet. It reminds me of having old VHS tapes with Rodgers and Hammerstein's musicals and watching them with family, or lucking out and winning the lottery for Broadway tickets and going to see a show with friends. We might see a season three. Keegan-Michael Key and Cecily Strong discussed how it could be inspired by Stephen Haunt's Sondheim's Into the Woods, while Kristen Chenoweth joked it could be inspired by Wicked. Either way, I'd be down for more. There's a lot of potential for different storylines with Mel's pregnancy. I'm also curious about the world building of this musical universe, given the leprechauns and some of Mildred's comments in season one. Part of me hopes we get multiple more seasons, perhaps even parodying Disney musicals or more modern shows in later seasons. But yeah, that'll about do it.